you've got a lot of things that you want to convey to your employees. Let me guess, you've got code of conduct, dress codes, maybe even how they take leave, and you want one place that you can refer to. Well, this episode is just for you. Today, I'm going to talk about employee handbooks and why this could be beneficial for your business. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Lawlands. My name is Sanam, and thank you so much for tuning in today. Like the title says, like I've said in the intro, we are going to be talking about employee handbooks. That's right. Employee handbooks are something that used to come up very, very often when I was working in an advisory space. And it is because it can be a consolidated piece of information or one document that's cohesive and that conveys the information that it needs to convey to all employees across the board, which could be around code of conduct, how they need to communicate, how they take leave. There's, there's a whole raft of things that you can put in there. And I believe that it can truly be beneficial for an employer. But I understand it is a lengthy, lengthy document. It is not something where you've got five pages in there and you're done. That's usually a policy. This is something where you would want to pull everything together so that the employee knows what is expected by the company. Now, I have something very exciting to share with you. Lawlands will officially be going weekly instead of fortnightly for our episodes. And I'm very excited to say that because there is a lot to cover. I was sitting down, to be honest, and doing a bit of a, a list on what I could discuss potentially over the course of the year. And employment law is changing. So those are always things that will pop up. But aside from that, there is just so much in the Holidays Act. There is so much in the Employment Relations Act and everything in between from advocates to poor managers to dealing with difficult employees. There's just so many things that need to be covered. And I am happy to cover that here on this podcast. So I am very, very excited to announce that it is going to be a weekly podcast that we will be doing now. And so that leads me into the second item that I wanted to discuss, which was laughs with Lawlands. Now, <laughs> with it being weekly, it's going to be hard to stick to a weekly schedule of these dry jokes, but I will try my best to fit them in. With that in mind, today we're having laughs with Lawlands, where I give you a dry joke in the episodes. What's it called when you steal someone's coffee? A mugging. <laughs> Look, this ties perfectly into today's episode because we need to talk about workplace etiquette, workplace culture, and just the general code of conduct, what needs to happen in a workplace. And I always remember every time I started in an office environment, there would always be this orientation that you would do. And as you walked through the office, you would wind up in the kitchen area and it would always be, and I am not kidding you, always people will open up the cupboards and they'll go, these are the cups that belong to everyone in the workplace, you can pick and choose whichever one you want, but these ones are a no-go. Unless they are your designated mug that you use for your coffee that you've brought in for work, you are not allowed to touch these. And if you touch them, people come for you. People do come for you. It is a very, very serious thing. So with that said, don't steal anybody's mugs. Don't steal anyone's coffee. We don't want a mugging in the workplace. But what we do want is to look at how to make sure that nobody can complain or fuss about mugs being stolen and we can set the expectation. And that's where employment policies come in, specifically the employee handbook. Now, the handbook is one document, one area that the employee can go to, which can sit very easily accessible. If you work in a remote business, have one drive, one area that they need to access. If you work in an office space, you can have it sitting out the front in the reception area too, so that the employee can always have a look at it. We are in the era of AI, post-COVID, so who is keeping these documents in the front of the office and in the reception area? I have no idea. So, so if that's not a thing that's applicable to your business, then I'm so sorry that this was a very old school thing to suggest. But if it is applicable, then you can absolutely leave it at reception or leave it with um, somebody that is in HR or that manages that kind of space so that the employees know that they can always go there and have a hard copy and you don't need to print one out and give it to everyone. Because that's what the question always used to be. Do I need to print this out and give it to all of my employees? No, but they all should have a copy of this. Now, what is an employee handbook? 
you're going to have tons and tons of policies in the workplace and it, there will be a whole separate episode dedicated to what policies I believe would be beneficial to you. In terms of an employee handbook, though, it's what covers a bit more broader topics. With, with this document, you're looking at code of conduct. You're looking at how people need to communicate if they're allowed to use the internet at work. Maybe you might have your uh, company's social media policy in there or if they are meant to work from home what the parameters are around that. Are they meant to do uh, 50% of the week working from, from home? There might be health and safety information in there. If you want to just put the basic practices on what either party's responsibilities are or what's expected of them, if an incident does come up, just to do a broader approach, which sits separate to the health and safety documents, then that's perfectly fine as well. This can be the first port of call that somebody goes to. Uh, so that is an absolute option as well. Aside from that, we are looking at this employee handbook, which can also include dress codes, any other information about how employees should behave or act in the workplace. If they need to be polite. Maybe they're dealing with a lot of customers, that they need to be presented a particular way, that they need to speak to them a particular way. You've also got performance reviews, promotions and pay rises and looking at uh, performance evaluations that you would do throughout the year. There is a lot of different things that you can have in there, including how people can take their sick leave, bereavement leave, who they need to contact. A lot of times I used to get people calling up and saying, I'm dealing with this employee. They keep just calling in sick or they keep taking annual leave last minute and it's just not OK. And, and I would ask, do you have a policy? Do you have anything written down? Well, no, it's just something that we've communicated. That's fine. If that's something that you've communicated, let's set that in stone. Let's make that into a policy that can be used later on. Or if you have an employee handbook, let's put that in the employee handbook. Let's have a whole leave section on who you need to contact, how many hours before, how many weeks in advance you need to apply for leave. The handbook needs to be a little bit more about the expectations of the company. So we're looking at things that are more expectations of the company, value of the company, approach of the company. So that's why you, you can see that it's great to have one place where everything sits. You need to make sure that the employee handbook, firstly, is applicable across the board. And it is something that's not tailored to a specific employee. You need to make sure all of your policies go across the board. The best thing to do with an employee handbook, uh, and I have found some links to other websites that have employee handbooks. So I will actually link them and then that way you can go in and see what other companies are doing with their handbooks and you can tailor it and switch it up for yours. When you have a look at them, you'll see how comprehensive they are. And the first thing that you need to have a look at is making sure that they are applicable across the board to all of your employees. There is nothing worse than for an employee to turn around and say that they are disadvantaged because you are targeting them versus the other employees. We, we do not want that. In that case, the best thing to do, make it applicable across the board. They need to make sure that they've read through it. Put language in there that requires the employees to read this information and make sure that they sign this. Make sure that you step away from the document and look at it as if it's a third party person picking it up. What may make sense to you sometimes might not make sense when a new employee is reading it. The handbooks can be up to 50 pages. I've seen some that are around the 20 page mark. So they are lengthy. Another thing that you can do with the document is when you write it out, you can always send them out as a draft to your existing managers, maybe, or all of your employees and say, hey, can I get some feedback? I did a commentary on an article recently on LinkedIn, and it was solely around introducing new policies. And I find one of the issues with having something like an employee handbook is that nobody gets their feedback. So the people that actually deal with the day-to-day -day issues of things, they're not being asked about their opinions or they're not being asked on how things might need to be tweaked depending on how they actually handle situations. So it is always good to get employee feedback. Now, you can do that with your existing employees. You wouldn't do it with any new employees because they shouldn't really be providing feedback and this document should be implemented and done by the time they come on board. It's basically taking, and the way that I would phrase it is it's taking our existing verbal set of policies and we are now putting them and setting them in stone. 
by putting them in writing. And this is the draft that's going out. And based on this draft, we just want your feedback over the next week, two weeks, so that we can tailor the handbook and make it even better. And your opinion matters. And whatever feedback you want to provide, please feel free to send that through. So that's a great way to gather some information about how to make the employee handbook better. Now, you need to make sure that it is across the board, the same for everybody. You've gotten people's feedback around it. And the last thing that I would say is that you need to make sure that the employees have read through and that they have signed the handbook. The last thing that you want as an employer, as a manager, someone in HR, is to reprimand an employee. You go back and have a look and they have never signed the handbook. I had this come up more often than not. And I I get it. It's the first week. There's a lot of excitement usually. If you're working in a business that's very go, 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 then you've probably just signed them up on the day or the day before. And it's not the ideal situation to bring on an employee like that. But those are the situations that you're dealing with. And if that's the case, then you need to make sure that you get as much signed as possible. And a lot of times the handbook is one of those ones where people just set and forget. They send it out. The employee signs, doesn't sign, doesn't matter. Then all of a sudden now the employee is coming in continuously late to work, not calling in correctly. And the employer is like, well, they need to be following the employee handbook because we want to do a disciplinary. Well, guess what? This particular employee never signed the handbook. So you can see where signing will be a huge impact. If there's any employees listening, I know this sounds anti-employee, but the benefit of having anything in writing is the fact that it's clear communication. The employer and the company has now set the expectation of what they're looking for. So it's transparency. Now the employee can turn around and have a look at certain pieces of information, certain areas, maybe their dress code, for example, and they can see what is expected of them very clearly laid out. And that's why I said earlier, you need to make sure that it is very clear what the expectations are from the company and that it can be read by a third party person that doesn't have any clue about what they're really reading. This is for somebody that might be trying to figure out how they need to apply for leave or what process they need to go to. It just needs to be very clear for them. I also believe it's really important to not have redundant policies. You don't want 800 policies that are exactly the same, the handbook that's the same. So this employee handbook needs to just sit on its own. It needs to be very specific. You can pull a bunch of policies into a handbook. There is no issue with that. But for more heavier hitting policies that maybe they sit separately so that you can really point to them, especially the ones that are dealing with bullying and harassment, looking at diversity and inclusion, equal opportunity policies, a lot of those can sit separately. Generally, those policies can be a lot longer in terms of page length. So that's why it's good sometimes to have them sitting to the side. So this employee handbook is more about across the board, everything that you would need in terms of setting expectations. A lot of times I notice that people put these particular things in the contract. Do not do that. So your dress codes, your social media policies, do not put them in the employment agreement. It's not a good idea because when you put something, anything in the employment agreement, it becomes binding on both parties. And the only way that you can change or vary the agreement is by a mutual agreement between the employer and the employee. So let's say, for example, that you have a social media clause or some sort of policy that's quite brief that could go into the handbook. But for some reason, it's in the employment agreement. What will happen there is once the employee signs, let's say you realize that a lot of employees during Christmas time, they're getting a bit rowdy and they post very saucy looking images <laughs> on the social media. Now, if that's happening, let's say you want to tweak that social media policy to say that you can't post on Facebook, maybe something else. You would need to individually go to every single employee and ask them hey, can we change this particular area in, in the contract? And if they say no, you have no right to change it. Whereas with a policy or a handbook, you can change it. You can put it out there, ask them to sign it. If they don't want to sign the updated one, look, it's still sitting in there in terms of being applicable to all the other employees. But you can still kind of say that this is for the benefit of the business and we've implemented this. Now, it can get a bit contentious if they haven't signed, but it's not as contentious 
as a employment agreement. Hopefully this has given you a good idea of what goes into the employee handbook. It's not an episode where I can get into all of the sections of a handbook that you need to have because you really do need to tailor it for your business and it will be quite useless if I sit here and say you should have a social media policy and you're sitting there going oh, we don't we don't have that as an issue have a look at what issues are quite prevalent in your company so people not taking leave correctly people coming in late what does lateness mean in the company and what's required if you are coming in late do you need to contact management directly or can you just send them a text message what are the requirements i think we've covered off everything that we need to when it comes to handbooks and like i said really look at those links because it'll at least spark some ideas around what you could have but please it's not a, I'll just rip this handbook and apply it to my business. It really does need to be tailored to your business. Well, thank you so much, everyone. If you are coming out on the other side of Christmas and New Year, I hope you had a wonderful and lovely break if you did get one. And if you did have to work through, then I hope you have picked up quite a lot of alternative days there. Mm -hmm.